Hi friends, this is Caitlin and welcome back to my October Eve 2022 series. Today we're going to be making a Halloween tag. I did kind of a practice round over here with this purple sky. We're going to be changing up the colors today. I'm using this moon stencil from Tim Holtz, these distress tags, a little bit of Copic Express It paper scrap, and the Good Fright Hello Bluebirds stamp set. So uh, make sure you hit the subscribe button so you can hang out with me every Friday, but we're going to jump right in to the tag today. So I'm pulling out some Distress Oxides for this card. I'm going to be using Antique Linen for the moon. And then for the sky, I'm just going through and picking some colors. I don't have a ton of oxides. I definitely have more of the inks than I do the oxides. But we're going to go with Salvage Patina, I believe, right around the edges to kind of create a really pretty glow and then going in with a deeper blue and then black right on the edges to create that really nice kind of nighttime sky shadow effect. So I'm using these tacky tiles from the stamp market to hold my big oxide inks in place. They're great because they temporarily stick to your surface and I'm going in with my Wendy Vecchi um, ma <laughs> magnetic uh, craft board. I don't think that's what it's actually called, but that's fine. Um, so I'm gonna be using this to do all of my inking on top of. I laid down a little bit of antique linen just really roughly under that moon mask. And now I'm gonna go in with the salvage patina and the uncharted mariner first to start creating the sky around my moon. So I'm going in with the salvage patina first, just working in little circular motions right on the edge. And even though I'm using that magnet, I am also holding the moon into place just because I really wanna make sure that this doesn't shift around. If you are someone who uses pixie spray, to hold your stencils you could probably do that too and it would just give you a little bit of extra insurance but i do not have pixie spray so i'm just holding it in place and if my fingers get inky then i'll live so i'm going over the um, edges of that salvage patina with the uncharted mariner and then going back over that blend one more time with the salvage patina with not a lot of ink on my sponge and just kind of playing back and forth between the two to get a really nice smooth blend. Oxides definitely layer back and forth a lot easier. That's what they're built for. So you get a really beautiful um, blend with a little bit less work than you would with regular inks. So to really sell this as a nighttime scene, I'm also going in with black soot right on the edges. I didn't put a ton on the upper um, areas just because that's where, you know, the moon is definitely shifted upward. So there wouldn't be as much shadow up there at the top, but I'm laying a ton down at the bottom where our little character is going to go. And then to create some stars, I'm going in with uh, the Lawn Fawn Pixie Dust Liquid. Oh, sorry, liquid stardust. That's what it's called. And a little bit of the Dr. Martin's no bleed white. And I'm going to combine those with a tiny bit of water just to make sure that everything kind of moves. And this will give me white stars with just a hint of shimmer. So to create tiny, um, tiny, tiny stars, I'm just tapping my brush on the edge of my little stamper. This is just an acrylic stamper that I'm using as a palette. And then when I want some bigger splotches, I go in and tap my brush with my finger. Something about the different pressure and like vibration of how you're tapping it creates the different dots. So um, now I'm going to go in to create the craters on my moon. So I'm using the same uh, antique linen oxide and I'm just going to go in much heavier handed this time so that we get that kind of crater effect. And again, I'm just kind of holding this down with my fingers. And as long as I work in sections, I found that I don't have any issues, um, you know, getting a clean impression with my stencil. So now I removed all of that and I'm gonna get to work on putting my sentiment in place. So I'm gonna be using one of the sentiments from the stamp set. And I love this stamp set. This is from Hello Bluebird. It did come out last year. They do still carry it. 
Um, but I love that this stamp set has a two-part sentiment. So we're going to be using both parts, one right over the center of the moon, one a little bit over to the side. So it says, happy haunting to all and to all a good fright. And I am going to stamp this a couple times. I'm using the Ink on 3 super dark black ink just because I felt like it would hold up on top of the oxides a little better. Sometimes oxides can kind of leak through your ink because of the extra um, pigment that's in them. So on a little piece of Copic scrap, Copic Express It scrap paper, I'm stamping this sweet little image. I love this little fox. I don't know if he's a witch or if she's a witch or he's a wizard. It could definitely go either way, but I love the little jack-o'-lantern lantern that they're carrying. So to give them some ground to walk on, I'm going to go in with my 100 black Copic marker and I'm just flicking up from the bottom and kind of going in different directions and different pressures and lengths to create a grassy silhouette on the bottom. And that way I don't have to worry about kind of a full scene, but it definitely gives a place for my little critter to stand that makes more sense than them kind of just floating in the sky, especially because this little witch doesn't have a broom. So I'm going in to color my little fox and I went in with some darker markers than I normally do for foxes. And this was just because I really wanted to play up the idea of that nighttime scene where all of the colors would be a little bit darker and richer, more in like the jewel tone kind of tones versus super bright. But obviously you could color this however you want. I'll have all of my colors listed down in the description box below for you just in case I moved through this too quickly. But the thing I do love about this tag is that the coloring is not complicated and I definitely feel like this is something anybody could do and it would look absolutely amazing. Because I knew I was going to be using such rich orangey browns for my fox, that's what really pushed me to try using the blue sky for this one instead of the purple. I think both obviously would look beautiful and create that nice contrast, but I particularly love how orange and blue look together, especially when trying to create kind of that creepy fall feel. So I'm going in now to bring in my own little pop of purple. And uh, so I'm using some V9 on the cape and the little, um, what is that? The, not, it's not the brim, the band on the hat. And then I changed it up a little bit and I went with uh, a B marker for my middle shade and then this beautiful v uh, fluorescent violet for the highlight and I love this combination like it's not quite blue it's not quite purple but it is so rich and so vibrant and I really think it just pops like crazy in this nighttime scene. So for the black parts of my little witch hat, I'm going in with the 100 marker first and then just a little bit of my N8 to pull that out. Then I'll go in with the N6 for my highlight, which I know is not super bright, but I did just want to leave the tiniest little sliver for N4 as a true highlight um, without, you know, taking away. Again, I wanted everything in this to be a little darker than I would normally make it. So I went in and created kind of a gold handle and gold inside highlights on that lantern. And now I'm going in with my oranges to create kind of the pops on my little pumpkin, the little pumpkin candy bucket as well as the pumpkin lantern. And for those um, orange markers, I definitely went more yellowy orange versus the brown, just so they would look a little bit different and pop against that fox. I didn't want to use the same colors throughout um, because to me it just kind of confuses the eye then of why they're all the same color orange. So I'm going in with a white gel pen to add some highlights and clean up any little places where my Copic coloring might have gone out of the lines. Then I'm going to hold my little fox up into place and kind of just get an idea of where I like them on my panel. I decided that I needed to add in some extra black right between where the legs are going to be. And then I just glued that down flat because this is going to be a tag. I don't like to have too many 3D parts kind of hanging off. I just feel like they usually get stuck or tangled on something. So I adhered it flat and I used liquid glue so I could kind of zhuzh and smush 
the my fox into place until I was happy with where it was. And then just to add a, something a little different, I grabbed these super cute clay bats from Twiddler's Nook. I've had these for a couple years. I break them out every Halloween because they are too freaking cute. And so I'm going to put three up in that upper corner, just kind of creating a nice visual triangle, but it also helps to draw your eye to both sides of that sentiment. And I just love the little silhouette of the bats up against that moon. So the last step, because this is a tag, is to add our little tie. So I'm grabbing two different kind of Halloween twines that I've picked up. I think these just came from the craft store. One might be might be a lawn fawn scrap from like when they package your stamps from a year or two ago I'm not sure so I just did a regular loop through on those and then I'm also going to go in with the thinner twine if it is lawn fawn I'll link it down below for you um, and I'm just going to tie a cute little bow right around the edge just to kind of reinforce where that is but I love the look of this with the extra little bow um, and I do trim it so that my ends aren't hanging down too much in front of my scene. But it's with these kinds of things, it's such a simple tag that I really, as far as like the steps that it took, that I wanted to make sure that it all made sense to me. Um, and I, to keep it in place, I just added a tiny bit of glue to the tip, uh, my fingers to the tips so that they don't unravel. And then I added a little dot of glue as well right to the center part of the bow so it doesn't come untied. So that is my super cute tag ready to be tied on to some kind of Halloween present. I love Halloween. I do usually end up giving gifts, so I know I will use this. I hope you're feeling super inspired. Tags can sometimes be a little less daunting than a card or some kind of bigger project. So if you only have a little bit of time to craft, maybe try something like this. But again, I'm so grateful you came to hang out with me today. I hope you have an amazing night. I will see you tomorrow and happy crafting.